Hey everybody, and welcome to the final episode in our Flutter and Focus series on asynchronous coding in Dart. In this episode, we're going to cover generators, which are functions that can produce not one, but multiple values. They can do that either synchronously or asynchronously. You may remember this chart from one of the earlier videos. A synchronous generator will have a return type of iterable, while an asynchronous one has a return type of stream. As you'll see in a second, the code for both looks mostly the same. The big difference is that synchronous generators are expected to produce values on demand right away, so they can't wait on futures or streams. Async generators, on the other hand, are allowed to take their sweet, sweet time producing values, so they can use the await keyword. One other thing to note before going on is that while generators are really handy when you need them, you're probably not going to need them very often. In the past year of coding with Flutter, I've used an async generator just once. That said, when you do see that right spot and think, this is it, this is the place where a generator can save me a bunch of boilerplate, and I know how to do it because I am a Dart rock star, it's very satisfying. So let's start with synchronous generators, but first, a quick review of iterables and iterators. An iterator is a thing that lets you iterate one at a time over a series of values. It's a very simple interface. There's the current property, which returns the current value, the most recent one you've iterated to, and the move next method, which tells the iterator you're done with the most recent value, so forget it and load the next one into current. Iterable is also a simple interface. It just means a class that can give you an iterator of a particular type. In this case, since my strings extends iterable string, it needs to have an iterator property that returns an iterator string. One of the cool things about iterables is that you can stick them in a for in loop. If I have one of these my strings objects, for instance, I can use for in to loop over each of its values one after the other. Dart will automatically call move next and current for me, so I can just write a simple loop. Some of the handy methods you're used to with streams, like where and map, can also be used with iterators. They just return a new iterator, which you can also loop over using for in. So, how do you create a generator that returns one of these iterables? Well, first declare a function and make sure it has a return type of iterable. Here I'll define one that's going to return a, a range of numbers from start to finish. Next, use the sync star keyword to mark the function as a synchronous generator. This is just a way to tell Dart that the function is going to produce multiple values on demand. Once that's done, I just need to use the yield keyword to yield each of the values in order. Yield is kind of like return, but it doesn't end the function. Instead, it provides a single value and waits for the caller to request the next one. Then it picks up executing again, in this case, doing another round of the loop. When it hits yield, it returns that value and waits again. Interestingly, this function doesn't really begin executing at all until someone starts iterating over the iterable that it returns. It's providing values synchronously, on demand, so the first time someone tries to get one of those values, that's when it kicks on and runs until it hits yield. And since that return value is an iterable, you can do all the usual stuff, like looping over the values. This code will print out the numbers from 1 to 10, for example. You can also use the normal methods iterable has, like where if you decide you only want the even numbers, or for each if you decide you can't be bothered with an actual loop. One last thing before we move on to async generators. The yield keyword has a variant for yielding other iterables. If I had chosen to make getRange recursive, for example, and I'll give you a second to read the code, because that's a big change, I have to loop over the iterable returned by the inner call to getRange just so I can yield values one at a time. In the first call, that loop executes nine times. In the next one, eight, then seven, six, and you can see how my simple function just became quadratic. Fortunately, there's yield star, which you can use to yield a whole iterable, one value at a time, no loop required. All right, so that's yield, yield star, and synchronous generators. Next up are async generators, which work almost the same, only they return streams, and they can yield values when they decide they're ready. Let's say, hypothetically, we lived in a world where all math had to be done on a server. And so we had a function like this that would make a network call to double a number for us. 
Horrifying as that may be, if you saw the other episodes in the series, you know how to call that method once and use then to take action when the future completes. But what if I want to get a bunch of those values, one after another, in a stream? That's where I can use an async generator function. First, I declare a function that returns a stream of the right type. Then I add the async star keyword to mark the function as an async generator. Then I use yield to yield the values as I receive them. Notice that the function is calling a wait to wait on the future from fetch double. If this were a synchronous generator, that wouldn't compile. Now I've got a method that produces the doubles of a range of numbers, one at a time, waiting on fetch double for each one. And just like any stream, I can use where, map, for each, listen, whatever I want in order to take advantage of those values. Also, if I wanted to rewrite my fetch doubles function to be recursive, I can still use yield star with a stream to keep my code tight and efficient. All right, that's all we have for this video and all we have for this Flutter and Focus series. Hopefully, it's demystified some of the core concepts of async coding for you. Because once you get used to handling futures and streams, designing our apps to react to asynchronous data, you will wonder how you ever got by without it. In the meantime, head to dart.dev and flutter.dev for more info on Dart and Flutter, and we'll see you next time. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, try these others. Or subscribe to the Flutter channel. It's Google's new portable UI toolkit. There's a button around here somewhere. <laughs>